Yo, what's going on guys? It's finally time for me to do a video on the campaign exclusive quest. This is something we got in the fifth anniversary and I've yet to do a video on it till now. This setup where I'm gonna be talking about does require full auto. So let's say you're like, oh, I'm against full auto or something. Well, you can do it, but it's very crucial that you do have full auto on this quest. I'm gonna do a quick run right here. Take note that the Kaguya and Nobio, very important. I'm gonna do a really quick run here so we can uh, see the damage and how it goes. So this is the setup we're running. It's what's taken from Twitter. Um, I made some adjustments to it, but I, I seen it on Twitter. I was supposed to make a video on this like a couple hours ago, but I just haven't got around to it because I started streaming and whatnot. And by the time I, I ended up forgetting. Do know this quest does give pots as well and white scales. So that if you're if you're farming for white scales, I highly recommend using this quest. But the real reason why this quest is very important is that it's the number one way to rank up in terms of speed. As you see how quick this quest is cleared, it gets good rank XP, which is very good since most quests don't give enough for the time invested. This quest has been crucial to many players attaining rank 250, and it's the number one way if you want to rank up your main character. Okay, it's not the best in terms of XP, but it's very, very good for your rank. So if you're one of those players who's like, man, I I want to get to rank 155, but ah, it takes so long. I want to get to rank 185, but ah, it takes so long. I want to get to rank 210, ah, it takes so long. This is the way to get to those ranks. The reason I mentioned those ranks is that each of those points is when you get an HP boost to your maximum overall team HP. This is crucial if you want to really get the higher HP amounts and feel a little bit more tanky in your stamina build. A midi doesn't really matter. It's very, very good. But before that, let's talk about the setup. So we're going to go to party here. I'm going to talk about the setter, the, the setup. First thing first, we have MVP tier, the core, the most important part of this whole thing. Do note there's another option in the Caius, or, or Cashew, I think his name is. Um, I don't have him. I think the summer variant you need, um, so that's unfortunate. But tier is free to play. You can get her from the side stories. You can go here to home, go to quest. Go down here to world. Uh, where is the, I don't remember where it is. <laughs> I don't remember where it is. Uh, the side story is here. You go. I think it's on the fourth page. I think Skyborn Bonds. Yeah. So, actually, all of them from this one event. Oh, look at that. You get all three characters in this one video and one event. Isn't that amazing? Pretty good, right? I don't remember what rank or what story chapter you have to be up to. But this is very, very, very good. Now, Tier is the MVP. She's the core. You pretty much have to build around her. Slot two and three. Now, these two slots are open, but I have to explain to you how full auto works. And this is, you have to take note of this. It's very important. Full auto goes down based by tier. So in tier one, we have buffs. Buffs take priority over any skill in the game. A buff is displayed as a yellow square. So if you're, if the icon around this skill is yellow, I don't know why I'm stuttering so hard, but if the icon around the skill is yellow, then it's a buff skill. Secondly, any skill that's a debuff will go after a buff. After all the buffs are done, and all the tier one is done, every buff is done, that's usable, then all blue skills will activate next, which are debuffs. So example of a debuff is, here we go. So this is a blue skill, which is a debuff. Right after buffs, debuffs come out. So that's very important. And then after all blue skills have been hit, then we get to the attack skills. So all red skills will be targeted next. They have a red border around them. Now in this setup, 
what do you need in your front line? It's two characters who either have a yellow skill that cannot be activated. For example, tier skill one is a yellow skill, but it will not be activated due to the fact that it requires you to target one ally. Any skill that requires you targeting an ally will not activate. Two, they need a green skill. Green skills are healing skills. No healing skills shall activate. Why? I don't know. Side games. <laughs> uh, but no green skill shall activate. And three, they cannot have a blue skill as that will come out before uh, Tears Nuke. So they cannot have a yellow skill. Or if they have a yellow skill, it cannot target. They cannot have a blue skill but they can have green skills. So in this team comp here, my slot two has three red skills. That's fine. Well, tears is number one because of turn order, or I mean skill order. They go from left to right. So whoever's in slot one, which is tier here, activate their skills first, and it goes down to the right. So he will activate his skills secondly, and third will be Elise, so. That's the order they go in. So uh, them having attack skills, perfectly fine. This, they cannot have green. Well, they can have green, but they cannot have yellow or blue. Tier here has a green skill, but will not activate because it's a healing skill. So when it comes to building your team, you gotta keep note of those very important aspects because if you don't have it right, they will activate other skills before Tier can get her nuke off making your run slower, therefore you're getting less rank XP. Your back row does not matter. You can put anything you want here. If you want to level up characters, this is a good place to level up characters. It's the reason we run Nobio, as it's a way to level up your characters as well. Now, with that explained, let's talk about the main character, because this is very, very important. Main character also followed by these rules. Therefore, you will need a main character who has a skill that cannot activate. Personally, the best option is Doctor. Doctor does not have a skill that will activate as it's a green skill. You have other options as in Rune Slayer, Tormentor, Sage, stuff like that. But one thing that's very important to know is that Doctor has the ability to use guns, and the MVP of this whole build setup is Flama Orbis. Yes, coral weapons have a purpose now. I can't believe it, but it does. The, the sub skill is important. When main weapon boosts to light ally skill damage specs when main character is not debuffed, this allows you to do more damage than you would have normally, allowing you to run things like Nobio, and Kaguya, as I used in this video. With low investment, I would say, not, not a ton of investment. We're gonna look at the pool here, as the pool has no Opus here. Um, it has one Eden. I, I, I literally ran out of weapons. I, I threw anything I can in the grid, but cut me some slack. I would've put another sword here if I had an option, but I just did not have an option, so. This is the grid, I just threw random weapons together. We, we have like, what? five unknowns <laughs> i was just throwing weapons into the grid and i ran out of weapons that are not whale tier unfortunately i'm sorry i would have put another sword there if i had options to but this is the grid and it only works thanks to this main hand if you try to copy this grid and you don't have the main hand your damage will not even be enough to kill to kill the boss so there's no you need this main hand it's farmable it's no longer farmable now, but it was farmable. To be honest, if you didn't farm it, you're probably not even strong enough to be worrying about this in the first place. So I'm just throwing that out there. It's very important. Is the Akasha weapon that important? Not really, but it's here because more damage. So in case anybody's gonna ask about that. Now, I don't know what you can do if you're new because if you don't have this weapon, I really don't know. So I'm sorry. You're gonna have to figure out a pool and you're gonna have to test your damage. 
to see what you can do. One thing I will mention is that if your damage is on the low end and you're not able to kill it with Kaguya, feel free to, to use things like Lucifer, Sev, Zeus. You don't need to run Nobio Kaguya or double Nobio. It also works to be honest as well, right? You don't have to run Kaguya. If you want higher drop rate, then you'll run Kaguya. But do doing double Nobio, it's totally fine. So don't worry too much about running Kaguya. Just first find out what you can do to kill it and then slowly work your way down to Kaguya. And if you can't kill a Kaguya, go up to the next level to Nobio. If you can't kill a Nobio, go up to the next level, which is like Lucifer, Zeus, Seth. Do the best you can with the stuff you have access to. Now the summons, as I mentioned, Nobio, I recommend is the main summon for you. Uh, I did rec put a video out on this, so if you didn't make it, it's unfortunate, but I recommend running Nobio. If your damage is really, really, really bad, you may have to run like Lucifer, Zeus, Sev. Um, just know that the cap is 30K on this, on this fight. So very important. And uh, that's about it really. The summons, you can put anything here really. It's not gonna change much. The cap is 30K, so Metatron will not do anything. It's a hard cap, so your hard cap at 30K. So if you want to put Metatron, it's not gonna change anything. Just put the highest stat stakes you have in your pool for the setup. Other than that, hope you guys have fun farming this quest. You can get the rank you want, this Magnafest. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.